Hey Divination, thank you for joining us in this live stream. Today I'm going to show you how to create a styled and inverted uh, cursor for your Divi page. Uh, so we're using Divi if you're non elegant themes maybe. Make sure that you check out Divi in one of the links in the description below. And without any further ado, let's get to it. All right. So I just want to say hi on everyone on YouTube and Facebook as well. If you guys have any questions, make sure to leave a comment on both platforms and I'll be checking on those quite frequently just to see if you guys are following along and yeah, if you have additional questions. So let's take a quick preview at what we're going to do within this tutorial. So I have a page over here and as I'm moving my mouse, you can notice that I have a styled cursor. So we're going to achieve that for our Divi page. Um, and this cursor is Divi Bill actually, and we're using some code to transform it into a cursor that follows you throughout your stay on a certain page. And it also has this kind of inverted effect. So that means that when we hover a dark background color over here, it turns white and vice versa. So this just makes sure that the cursor stays visible at all times and people know where they're at on their page. And we also have an additional effect that we're showing you. Um, you can trigger certain uh, cursor changes when hovering certain items. So in this tutorial, we're going to show you how to trigger a change when a button is hovered. So if I go to this button over here, it changes in style. The cursor changes and it also have this, it has this kind of same inverted effect, but just on a bigger scale, if if you will. So if I scroll down over here, this will apply to each one of the buttons on my page. And we're going to recreate this using Divi. So you might recognize this layout. This is called the bike repair um, layout pack. And I think I believe this is landing page from that layout pack, but this approach will work on any kind of website you're building, any kind of page you're building. So I'm just going to use this um, layout on another page. So over here, I have the landing page of the bike repair layout pack um, on a separate page. And I'm going to start editing uh, the page by enabling the visual builder. So we're, you know, the cursor we're adding within this tutorial is page based. So you can control where you want it to, to be present, where you don't, but you can easily turn this side wide as well. Um, all right. So I'm here inside the um, DV theme, not DV theme builder, just the DV builder. And to build my cursor, I'm actually going to use um, a built-in text module. And for that text module to be present within my page, I'm going to add a new section to the bottom of my page. Now, this section is going to be just a placeholder. And there's a particular reason to why I'm adding this to the bottom of the page. So the way the Z index works within a, a Divi page is that the last section has the highest Z index. So it overlaps everything that goes above it. Um, that's the reason why we're adding it to the bottom over here. So this is a, a placeholder that we're going to use to build our cursor. Um, and we're going to start off by opening the section settings. So by default, a section has some uh, default top and bottom padding. And we're just going to remove that by adding zero pixels to both options because we don't want this section to show up whatsoever within our design. We just want it to carry our cursor, which we'll add just a little bit later on. So next, we're going to add a new row to contain our cursor. Um, and that's going to be a row with one column. And same thing goes for this row. It's just a container that we're using to add our text module. We're also going to make sure that um, the custom gutter width is set to one, which removes all space between modules later on, because we're also going to need a code module to, you know, bring the functionality in place. And we're also going to remove the top and bottom default padding of our row by adding zero pixels to both options. All right, so now that we have these two containers in place, we can use a text module um, to transform um, our cursor into this new type of cursor. So I'm going to add a new text module to this column over here of our last section that we just added. And important thing to mention is that you have to make sure that this content box is empty um, if you don't want any text to show up within your cursor, as you can notice over here. So uh, make sure that that's empty. Then we're going to move on to the design tab over here in the sizing settings. We're going to set a certain width and height for our cursor, which is going to be uh, different depending on different screen sizes. So I'm going to use 100 pixels for the width and height on desktop, but I'm going to bring that down to 60 pixels for both options on tablet and 40 pixels for both options on phone. 
Let me do the same thing for the height over here. There we go. And if I go back to the preview over here, um, the circle is generated using border settings. So we're going to add these border settings over here to the border settings of our text module. Uh, I'm going to use 100% round the corner, so border radius for my text module to turn it into a circle. And because we have the same width and height, um, it turns it into a perfectly sized circle. Uh, we're also going to use some border width, which is going to be three pixels, and we're going to turn this to white. And then we'll go to the filter settings and we're going to select a blend mode. So this blend mode will just help us achieve that kind of inverted effect. And the blend mode we're going for is called difference. So difference is one, uh, one of the, not one of the, it's the blend mode that um, creates that inverted effect for uh, your cursor. We're also going to need to add two lines of CSS code to the main element of our text module kind of this transition and pointer events set to none. We're also going to reposition our cursor over here and we're going to use a fixed position. So we want it to, you know, we want the cursor to modify according to our uh, current cursor and that's going to happen in the next bar when we'll add the code. But this setting the position helps with that in advance. So we're going to use fixed for the position and top left corner. We're also going to increase the Z index to two just to create, uh, make sure that there's uh, the right kind of overlay on the page itself. Um, and we're also going to assign a CSS class, which is just called cursor to this text module because we need to um, address it in the next part of this tutorial. So I'm going to take one quick look to see if there are any questions up until now. But um, yeah, so far we've created the cursor and we've used a placeholder section and row for that. But we've styled the cursor itself within the text module so we could visually just, you know, make everything work. And in the next part, we're going to switch over to the functionality part, actually replacing our cursor with this text module. So just going to take a quick look. I don't see any questions, so yeah, let's move on. So to add the code to our page, we're going to use a code module. And for that, I'm just going to quickly switch over to wireframe view over here so I can add it to that last section, which uh, contains our cursor text module. So I'm going to add a code module over here and we're going to need some uh, JavaScript, jQuery code and some CSS code as well. So to prep for that, I'm going to add some style tags which are going to contain my CSS code and also script tags, which are going to contain my jQuery code. All right, and we're going to start prepping our jQuery code by adding the following lines to um, in between the script tags. Uh, you can find all of the code um, and the JSON file, everything step by step by going to the blog post, which is directly mentioned in the description below. There you can grab the JSON file if you want to use it right away. Um, and you can also copy the code that you need for this to work. So yeah, we're just starting off our code with uh, this document ready function. Um, and then we're going to take our cursor. So the, the text module that we've assigned a CSS class to, and we're going to place it after the uh, builder inner content. So that's one of the CSS classes that's used when you use the Divi builder and use, you know, build a layout. So this just, places it right after that. And then we're going to remove the cursor, the default cursor on our page by adding body cursor none between the style tags there. So this will just remove the cursor at first hand. Um, and now we can set the cursor text module as our cursor using the following lines of code right below the insert after function there. So. This is what we're going for. So this just basically um, updates the uh, position of our cursor every time someone moves their cursor. So this is the code that works really well for that. Very short, but it does the job very good. And it just repositions itself fluidly, which is really nice. Um, and 
We're also going to want to achieve that hover effect when we hover the button. Let me just show it once again. So this just changes the styles of our cursor. And to do that, we're going to use a new CSS class that we'll place within the style text. Let me just grab it here. And it's called increase size. So what we're basically doing is we're increasing, we're transforming the module. Um, and we're also ch giving it a white background color, which leads to this kind of more intense effect here. But now that we have that CSS class, we still need to trigger it. And we're going to trigger that on hover. So let me just add this new function here, uh, which does exactly that. So over here, you can notice that we have a new hover function and it responds to every ET uh, PB button, which is one of the default classes that a DV button has. So every time a DV button is hovered, we toggle the increase size class that we've added over here. So this happens on hover and uh, we're targeting obviously the cursor. So this cursor will um, get this class as soon as someone hovers a button. So you can definitely make this work with any kind of module. You can also assign a custom uh, CSS class and just have this be triggered on one particular mo module or element in general uh, or multiple ones. You have full control over when a cursor changes their style. All right. So now we're just going to save our page and exit the visual builder. Save and exit. Yes. And there we go. Our cursor has been changed and let's go to a button over here. As soon as I hover it, it creates this kind of styled inverted style and you can be as creative as you want with this mouse course cursor. You can style it however you want using these build in options and you're able to download this JSON file for free. So I'm just going to take a quick look to see if uh, there are any questions. I don't see any, but yeah, it was... thank you guys. Thank you guys for joining. If you like this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up and we hope that you're enjoying the overall uh, DV design initiative where we try to put something extra into your design toolbox each and every week. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.